So, welcome everybody. I'm Jean-Pierre Parent. I, grew, I wrote a book called Kitchen Sink Farming, How to Cheaply and Easily Grow, Sprout, and Ferment Your Own Food for a Healthier Now and a Greener Future. So today we're going to be talking about some of the easy, advanced techniques from that book, sp specifically focused on fermenting, with a little bit of growing as well. You see the sunflower microgreens in various stages of enjoyment here. So, um, if anybody has any questions, please just raise your hand and, and we'll figure it out. If you think of a question, chances are somebody else's as well because I can kind of skip things or cover things really quickly. So you'll do a favor to everybody by asking. Okay? So we are going to start with something which is quite simple, uh, making probiotic water. This is what I've done right here. I've sprouted wheat. You can use any grain that you want. Okay? You sprout it and you fill it up with water. You put it in a jar or a glass or hold it in your hand if you have enough time and cover it up with a coffee filter and a rubber band and let it sit for a few days, okay? All these bubbles in here, that's a sign of, of bacterial and yeast action, you know? There's a little bit of bacteria, of lactobacillus bacteria naturally on the, the wheat and there also comes in from your, your natural environment. The yeasts float in and start to enjoy this delicious food to them. In the meantime, they are making it incredibly digestible for us, breaking down the difficult to digest parts of it, proteins into amino acids and starches into simple sugars, which is started by the sprouting process. Okay? So, yes? So you said that these are sprouted. Are they sprouted before you've added the water? Or yes. So you've got the whole sprouting process of yes. and sprouting and now you're... This is a perfect example of a very basic thing which I just didn't mention. So yeah, they're completely sprouted. And I'll pass this around so that everybody can look at it and also smell it. It gets um, lemony and yeasty and is delicious. Like lemonade, so good, okay? This is the first thing that we're going to be talking about because this is the basis of a lot of other stuff, okay? So does that sound easy? Does that sound like something everybody can do? Super easy, right? But hugely important. This is also um, a really powerful digestive aid. People buy acidophilus, bifidus, all these probiotics, you know, eat all kinds of yogurts, etc. Really expensive stuff. I've put that under a microscope. I've put this under a microscope. I've also tried to culture the super designer acidophilus and things, and they're weak. They're sickly. This stuff is incredibly strong. Plus, a lot of it comes from our local environment, so it's beneficial to us on another level as well. Okay, so you drink the water. You drink the water. Yeah, I'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, and if you'd raise your hand, I'd appreciate it because then we can you know get through stuff and I can sort of take things at the end of the the thought. Okay, I appreciate it. So um, so I just wanted to show you this to show you how easy it is. Now let's talk about why ferment. Does anybody have any ideas? What's the benefit of fermenting? The fermented bacteria. The friendly bacteria, yeah, hugely important. Why is that important? For our intestinal flora. For our intestinal flora, yeah, our intestinal flora is the friendly bacteria. We have five pounds of bacteria in our system on average. It can all be good or all be bad. And good and bad is kind of an arbitrary term. They don't care if they're good or bad, but they can help us digest or they can hurt us. They can help us fight free radicals. They can break up impacted intestinal bacteria or intestinal, uh, um, you know, impaction in our intestines. That's what intestinal impaction is, is impaction. No, I'm just kidding. And, uh, and start to, you know, dec uh, break those things up so that when the nutrients come in to our intestines from our food, we can enjoy it completely, you know. They fight heart disease. They strengthen our immune system. The benefits are incredible, okay? And that's just one of the benefits of fermenting. I already mentioned, breaks down things into their most simple form so that we can digest them really easily. For example, um, you know, a lot of people might not be able to eat, well, nobody can, can digest soybeans, for example. They have all kinds of anti-nutrients, phytic acid, estrogens, all sorts of things that are not good for us. So you sprout them, start to break those things down. You ferment them, tofu, nama, shoyu, whatever, and they become actually good for us. Okay? Same is true for garbanzo beans, black beans, whatever it is. Sprout them, ferment them, and then do whatever you're going to do with them. The digestibility, the nutritional aspect, 
goes up, it magnifies incredibly. You know, the nutrition, sometimes nutrients can go up 5%, 10%, 20%. Sometimes sprouting and fermenting, they can go up 10,000%, okay? Which brings me to the third benefit of fermenting, which is that when you have, um, when you've sprouted things, when you've fermented things, the bacteria are going to go and eat those things and then create a whole new set of nutrients. For example, kombucha creates nutrients that we can't get anywhere else. There's glycuronic acid, which is incredibly powerful for fighting cancer. Ronald Reagan actually used it to cure his cancer in the 90s. It's been used in Russia and in the East for decades, centuries actually, for this benefit. Okay? So when you sprout some sunflower seeds, for example, you're breaking down the anti-nutrients, you're stimulating the nutrients, you are stimulating enzymes so it becomes living, okay? I talk a lot more about that in my previous lecture. Then you're fermenting it. You're simplifying the nutrients so that we can digest them more easily. You're implanting all kinds of wonderful bacteria in your system and you're also creating all kinds of new nutrients. Okay? So I think it's worth it. Plus it's delicious. It makes stuff taste amazing. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. So let us talk about another fermentation. This one you definitely are going to need your, your notepad out for because it's super complicated. You ready? Did you get that? I took the lid off, okay? I don't know. It's kind of hard. So I'm just going to make a little bit of room in here. Then you get an unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. Bragg's is one, Solana Gold is one, there are a few. Okay, unpasteurized means that it's still living, it's still got all the good stuff in it. So you unscrew this cap too, okay? And then you pour a little bit in there. And guess what happens? All the bacteria and yeast from this guy say, feast time country buffet situation and they start to digest all of the, the good stuff in this apple cider and then pretty soon the whole thing becomes apple cider vinegar. You want to cover it up with a coffee filter, a, this is a sprout bag, an old t-shirt, whatever, and you let it sit. In a couple weeks it's going to form a little, a little zuglio mat, it's called a scoby also, symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, and then the whole thing becomes apple cider vinegar. Um, this thing is, is what, like five bucks? This thing is also five bucks. So, pretty good deal. Okay? So, we're going to doing some stuff with, with vinegar. We're going to make some salad dressing. So, I just wanted to point out how incredibly easy that is. Okay? So, we have Rejuvelac. I'm going to pass this around so everybody can see it and smell it. And take a look at these wheat berries that I've taken out of other rejuvelac that I've made, okay? So pass this around, smell it, there we go, mm, so good, so good. And I'm going to put this one this way, so the middle person's going to get super confused. So the rejuvelac is the actual liquid? A liquid is the water, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, call it probiotic water, whatever you want. and. Um, Actually, let me get some glasses. You guys can pour a little bit and, and sip it. Is that, is that okay? Quick question. Yes, sir. When you say the seeds are sprouted, is that right? Six hours a day or a little for tail or something? A little tail. Yeah, you saw the one going around. Okay. Check out my other video and I go into detail about that. Exactly. You soak them overnight, you drain them, rinse them a couple times a day. It's like 45 seconds maximum of effort it takes, okay? so. Yeah, go ahead, pour some and taste it. The benefits begin already. Okay? So that's Rejuvelac. It's great on its own, and it's also, thanks, it's also the starting ingredient for a lot of other things. Okay? For example, this is the pulp from my juicer, from juicing apples and ginger. Okay? It was pulp, it was compost, it was garbage. I f poured Rejuvelac in here and I stirred it once or twice a day for three days. Then it becomes the most incredible, delicious ambrosia of amazingness and we're gonna have it for dessert with some sunflower butter and with some other things, okay? This 
is uh, sesame or sunflower and flax cheese. Sprouted sesame, sorry, sprouted sunflower and flax mixed with rejuvelac. Let it sit. Thanks a lot. And then it becomes fermented and um, absolutely delicious. We'll have a little bit of that in a minute. So, <clears throat> and uh, then I, you also can use the fermented uh, berries for making bread. All kinds of things. Dump that stuff in anything. You put it in kraut instead of salt water if you don't want to use salt. And it ferments stuff more quickly, more stably. It's more quick and it also keeps it good for longer. And now there's also no salt in there. So you're using these bacteria and you're putting them to work for you in your intestines, in your food, all kinds of places, and they love it, okay? They couldn't be happier to do that. So let's talk about some specifics. Let us uh, actually make a little, a little seed cheese right now. All right, so we are gonna take some sprouted sunflower seeds and blend them up. Pour in a little rejuvelac, actually enough to cover them, and put it in a jar. Yes? So when you sprout your sunflower seeds, how long do they last? Well, it's a fresh vegetable, you know. You want to eat it as soon as possible, so it's best to just make as much as you're going to use. But, um, I mean, a couple weeks, probably. So, you put them in there. Blend them up. Pour them in a jar. Uh, how am I out of jars already? Oh, thanks. Pour them in. Cover it up because the bugs love this as well. Why wouldn't they? It's amazing. And then let it sit for a few days. The whey is, is uh, like the, the liquid waste product that happens after the fermentation. Comes out the bottom and you're left with the seed cheese on top. The top layer will oxidize. It'll just turn a little bit brown because of being in the air for so long. Did you hear that little pssst? That shows you it's alive. And so you can, you can leave it. You can also just mix it up in there, whatever you want to do. But when you're doing stuff like, um, like macadamia or Brazil nut or that kind of really light, beautiful looking cheeses, then you might want to take it off. Okay? Just for aesthetics. There's not going to be quite as much um, nutrient because it'll break down with the oxygen. But... That's the seed cheese. Okay. Yeah. So, will you take a plate and pass it down, please? Okay. okay. Same with that. All right. Now, all this stuff is unflavored because I want you guys to really get the, the good stuff, you know, like really taste what it's all about. Um, but it's good as it is, but just as a basic ingredient, I think, thanks, true. I think you can imagine exactly what it's going to be like. I mean, this is like, this is worse than eating salsa without chips. This is just like the most basic, yeah, grab it, little quinoa. The most basic flavors, but we're going to move on from here. It's probably too much. Did you cover this with the, with the rejuvelac or just plain water? Rejuvelac. That's what made it ferment. If um, you use just plain water, then you're not sure what bacteria and yeast are going to get in there. You know? So you want to control it as much as possible. All right. What do you guys think? All right. Now this is next level. You see how white and beautiful and gorgeous it is? This is uh, macadamia butter. Okay? And... The, um, the reason that it's, it's kind of solid looking and light and fluffy is because I let it hang in a bag and let all the water drip out of it. Okay? You can also age it, compress it in you know, some cheesecloth or some muslin or a sprout bag once again. Thanks. 
and uh, it'll get nice and hard and almost parmesan-y, wrap it in wax, whatever you want to do. Just like a, uh, a dairy cheese. How's that? We're moving on, aren't we? Moving on up. Okay. And yeah, and let's just try just the sunflower cheese by itself. Oh, what was the first one? I thought that was sunflower. It was sunflower flax, and it was and it was aged a little bit. So, and this one is just fresh, right from the the churn here. Churn. The the cheese churn. <laughs> Thank you. Little tapa style. <laughs> there you are, senor. Okay. So there's a whole incredible, huge flavor profile that's available. And you saw what we did? I just did it. 30 seconds. It's the simplest thing, okay? But it also, I mean, they're like, like vegans, for example. Um, sometimes, you know, they can't put on weight. And it's difficult to digest nuts and seeds, etc. You ferment stuff, and it becomes available to everybody. Raw food, which is what I what I talk about, is not for everybody. You have to have a strong digestive fire. You have to be active. You know, it's only best for certain natures, certain constitution. Fermented food is for everybody. Everybody, in fact, needs it. I had mentioned that there's five pounds of bacteria in your system at all times. Bacteriologists joke that we're actually a colony of bacteria carrying a little bit of human cells around. The reason is, is because these five pounds of bacteria are tiny, tiny little cells, whereas animal cells are huge. So we are actually, right here, you're looking at 90% bacteria, 10% human, okay? It's also important, not just because they out, they out, you know, measure us, they outweigh us in our bodies, but Bacteria are absolutely brilliant, almost magical beings. They have been reproducing every 20 minutes for about two and a half billion years. Okay? We have been reproducing every 20, 30, 40 years, or whatever it is, for 100,000, a couple hundred thousand years. If you look at the DNA of bacteria versus humans, this amazing, complex, sophisticated organism, if DNA was like a book, we have a couple of pages of information. The rest is garbage, and it's a small book, okay? Bacteria DNA is like an Encyclopedia Britannica, and it is all information. It's all data, wall to wall. And the things that these little guys can do is absolutely incredible. They can bump into each other and share everything they know instantly. This is how, if bacteria develop resistance to a certain antibiotic in Paris, for example, bacteria in hospitals in New York will start to develop that same resistance within a matter of hours. These tiny little things, it's amazing, right? They also have this quality, it's magnetotastic bacteria, where they know where they are on the Earth's surface, these absolutely tiny, incredible things that are going to live their whole lives in one cubic centimeter of dirt, know where they are in relation to the North and the South Pole. You scoop some up, they're around geysers and mud, etc. You put them in a jar with their mud, and they'll make a line. You turn it a quarter turn, and the line will start going the other way. Why do they need to know this? I have no idea, okay? But whales, birds, these migratory creatures, us, we have a sense of where we are in space, you know, sense of direction. Those cells in our brains and our bodies evolved from these bacteria, okay? So absolutely incredible. The war on bugs, the, all this antibiotic craze, this antiseptic hand washing, etc., that started in the 50s, we're, we're losing this battle, you know? There's only one antibiotic right now that actually works. It's like the nuclear bomb. It's what everybody goes to, thanclomycin. And it's what knocks out all bacteria, you know? It's our last line of defense. Except there are bacteria which are now developing a resistance to it. So we're almost out of options. What people are, are very unfortunately dying from with these bacteria that are resistant to thanclomycin are staph infections, are strep infections. They're things that strong immune systems should be able to fight against, but they can't. How many times have you heard about doctors prescribing antibiotics for the common cold? 
It's very, very common, right? Common cold is caused by virus, not bacteria. So all these, these prescriptions for antibiotics are weakening in us, and we need to sort of shift our focus. Okay, so sorry to bring things down for a second, but I wanted to show you the incredible benefit. I mean, it's delicious, it's fun, it tastes good, there's nutrients, etc. But it's also aligning ourselves with this absolutely incredible being that covers every surface of the earth, every surface on the inside of our digestive system, without whom life would stop instantaneously. They're there when the food is made. They're there when the food gets digested, composted, and made into new food. Okay? So, good stuff. Let's move on. Um, the, the, the berries that I mentioned, these have been fermented in, in the probiotic water, okay? The water was strained off, and then we're left with these. I actually, I like things funky. So I will use these two or three times to make water. It gets faster because, you know, they're really biologically active, and it gets more intense flavor, which is something I love. How did you guys like the taste of that? The probiotic water, by the way. It's good, right? I mean, you could just drink it. Yeah. And it's like absolutely incredible for all the reasons we've talked about. Yes? Do you use distilled water or spring water? Excellent question. Anything without chlorine is your main thing. <laughs> chlorine, fluorine, these are put into the water system to kill bacteria, which we don't want to do because we love them, right? So you want to make sure that there's no chlorine. The, um, the water in Portland is, is pretty good. So it's really not an issue. I use filtered water because I have a filter. But you don't need to protect things by having distilled water and steam, you know, all this stuff. Because they're tough. And when you're sprouting stuff, just to kind of back up a little bit, the sprouts are actually taking nutrients out of the water. That's how you can sprout something and it grows into a big, beautiful sprout with no dirt. Is it sucking nutrients right out of the water, right out of the air, right out of the sun, you know? So just make sure there's no chlorine and you're fine. Speaking of which, if you are in somewhere where there's a lot of chlorine or you're not sure, chlorine is a gas. It's lighter than air. So you pour a bucket of chlorine. You leave it for 24 hours. All the chlorine is going to escape through the air. It actually takes a couple weeks. Really? Yeah, because we have some water issues here with the bull run water. And I thought the same thing, and I said that the other day. And they're like, no, it really takes a couple weeks. Really? Can we compromise and say one week? I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Get a filter. It's good. Or even better, wildwater.com and find uncultivated water, find spring water that's not been domesticated. Like, that's another subject. Okay, so we have um, taken some of these seeds. We have ground them up. The Vitamix is beautiful for that. You can use a juicer, or people have been doing this for thousands of years, so you don't need the fancy stuff. And we've made some, some bread, okay? This is... Uh, I made the breads really quickly, so they're, they're flat, um, just because I was, you know, busy. And so that's why they look like this, but they can be lovely, beautiful loaves, crusty, etc. And... Um, there's no flavor in this besides these fermented, sprouted wheat berries, okay? And I also overdried it. <laughs> so let's call it chips. <laughs> and this is all in the So is this dehydrated? Yeah. Is this how you... Yeah, it's dehydrated. You can also um, do it in the oven with uh, the light on, just making... You don't want it to go over 110 degrees. Most bacteria is fine up until about 140 degrees, but you've... You've uh, done all this work to get all this benefit. You know, some people cook their sauerkraut. Some people do all these things. And um, I don't really see the point in doing that because then you're, you're destroying, you know, a huge benefit of, of what you're doing. So, yeah, that's dry. It's super dry. But you can get the taste. Yeah, I tell you what, let's do the next thing, which is fermented sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, boiled and mix with rejuvelac and then sit. So easy. That's what I'm saying. You put rejuvelac in anything. Um, and I should warn you, th this one is, um, I wasn't planning on bringing it here, so I, I made it to my style. So it's pretty funky. It's pretty, it's pretty fermented. But I think it's just absolutely fantastic. And what, what's in the bread? It's just the wheat berries that are fermented in the probiotic water. So good to see you. 
Okay, so that is that. Moving on, we have slightly more gourmet bread options. Okay? I could see this one for a uh, toddler. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, the, the immune system of babies is, is really, really strong. They're, they're kind of weak structurally, but fermenting all their food. I mean, the breast milk has, has bacteria in it. You know, that should tell us something. There's actually um, a group of people who live in Japan that have one certain probiotic that goes through the milk and goes into the babies, then all these people in this one culture can digest this one sort of seaweed. Nobody else can. And there's no way to propagate this bacteria except enterically and then out through the breast milk. That's it. And you have to have it when you're a baby too. So the next one is, uh, is, is the stuff and it's with flax, garlic, and salt. Really simple, okay? And this one is not quite done. <laughs> it's a little goopy inside, but you'll get the idea. Flax, garlic, and butter. Flax, garlic, and salt with the, um, the fermented wheat. That's the base of everything. However, I said that you can use any grain to make probiotic water. You know, use whole oats, use rye, use whatever you want. And the next bread that we're going to be having, I've done just that. It is a pumpernickel rye. Boop. Thank you. And it's actually done and made properly. You're welcome. Yeah. There's gluten. Yeah, it's wheat. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So, um, additionally, just, just something that I've learned since I've been uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Something's really dry in your dehydrator. Put it in a, a plastic bag for a few days, and then it, it gets nice and, nice and goopy. So now, this has a little bit of garlic. It has a little bit of caraway. It is sprouted fermented rye. And then it has carob for color. Alrighty, so let's give this a little try. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still savory, but uh, it's quite good. No, they're not. It's too simple to write down. <laughs> And, whoops, I um, encourage you to try your own experimentations. This one I'll, I, I actually did write down, so I'll probably do something with it. It's good, right? Right? It's so good. Okay. So that's the, um, that's the bread portion of class. So how do you make all How what? How do you make them? So you take this stuff, your fermented seeds, grains, you put them in a Vitamix, a blender, a food processor, a masticating juicer. Add your other ingredients. Blend them up. Make a dough. Take it out. Put it on a dehydrator tray, in your oven, in the sun, whatever you want to do. It's already super active biologically, so you don't have to worry. It's not going to rise like yeast, which make bubbles as a waste product when they're activated and then die. It's going to stay alive, but it's also going to stay fairly dense. And then you dehydrate it or let the sun bake it or whatever till it's done. Then you eat it. Done. Yeah, so it's so easy. That's what I'm saying. It's so simple. You cannot buy food this good. Okay? You have to make it yourself. In Portland, it's a little bit more available, but this bread right here probably cost me a quarter to make. This apple, fermented apple butter, which um, I know I keep selling because it's really good. It cost me nothing to make. It was made out of garbage. Were you here when I mentioned it? It's from the, from the pulp from my juicer, yeah. Pulp from my juicer, apple and ginger. Um, so it's like, why aren't we doing this? It takes just seconds a day, you know, a minute, a couple of minutes while you're like learning where everything is. It's the best food you can possibly eat, sprouted, fermented, and it's pretty darn good too, right? Okay, so uh, what else to talk about fermenting? Um, that's it for now. Let's talk about greens.
And the reason that we're um, talking about greens is because that's going to be our little, our little entree. I wanted to make sure you guys had something fresh. So, sunflower seeds. Yes? One quick question. You, you cover it with a cheese cloth at the area, right? Yes. Then when it's ready, you, 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 know, you take it out what you're going to eat. Then you cover it with the slow down, and the slow down stop the, the transmission. Is that correct? Put it in the fridge. You put it in the fridge. So yeah. That's where you put a lid on top of it put it in the fridge. Yeah. Yeah, in the fridge, it's going to keep fermenting really slowly. Like a day in the world is going to be like a week or two in the fridge. So it's going to continue to improve, you know, but hopefully you're going to eat it in that, uh, in that amount of time. Okay? And then, you know, do whatever you want with it. You, like this, for example, you scoop it out, you put it in a, somewhere to, to drain and so it gets hard. You can eat it straight like we did. The rest is just culinary. But just getting this stuff in you is the key. Are there any other questions about fermenting? Would that jar, for example, would you eat only the cheese that the rest and use it? Or you don't oh, that's a good question. It's actually, um, you can use whey for all sorts of things. You can, I mean, you, people use whey protein, you know, to supplement. It's great, but you, I mean, you, hopefully you have enough of the good stuff to keep you in business. So you can water plants with it. You can wash yourself and your pets. You can, um, Use it to ferment other things. Like I could have used that to ferment the apple butter. You know, all sorts of options. Hi. So if you go online, there will be thousands of uses for whey. Okay. So then, let's talk about microgreens. Okay. These um, the sunflower seeds have the shell on. This is key. You couldn't grow these into microgreens. They're already broken up because they have no shell on them. So they're not super into putting a lot of energy into becoming a plant because they know that they're not going to survive. You know, they need the protection of the shell. And uh, so anything with the shell, you can grow into a grass, into a microgreen, whatever. Any kind of lettuce, you can grow really quickly and make a baby lettuce. Baby arugula, baby red leaf, whatever it is. You can even grow one big, let it go to seed, take those seeds out, plant them over the next several months, and let another one grow big. You now have a seed factory that's going to keep you in free greens for the rest of your life. You know, Great for us. We don't feel like going to people's co-op or Whole Foods or whatever. Or we don't want to pay. Even better for people who don't have access to um, you know, fresh food or food in general. For example, things like quinoa, amaranth, make an incredible amount of seeds. One plant could feed many, many villages. Fresh salad, fresh, fresh greens every day by taking the seeds and sprouting them, you know, going back to the plant. So a lot of, um, there's a lot of, a lot of benefits, and, and uh, I'm really excited about, you know, sharing this with everybody. Okay, so we have these sunflower greens, or sunflower seeds, and we need to soak them now to sprout them. This is like the level two sprouting stuff. In the previous video, just talked about simple sprouting. What makes it hard is that they float, but we can, we can deal with it, don't worry. So the easiest thing to do is put them in something like this sprouting bag, for example, put them under water, and then put something on top to hold them down, like a rock. Okay? If you don't have a sprouting bag, the other option is you fill it up with water, you watch them float to the surface, want to escape, and then you press them down with the lid. And a little bit of water is going to come out. This shows you that you have filled it up to the maximum. And then you screw the lid on. These are now waterlogged. There's a little bit of air inside of the seeds. That's why they float. So there's going to be a little bit of bubble that comes out as the seeds do their thing and start to germinate. More and more water, or more and more uh, bubbles will come out. So while they're, they're germinating, while they're soaking for eight hours, just turn it over a couple of times. Done. Okay? You with me? Okay, great. So after these have... Um, sent out little tails, then we're going to do the next stage, which is putting them in dirt or giving them some kind of substance to hold on to as they grow into these wonderfully beautiful lettuces, micro lettuces. Okay? So as a tray is great. I love to save these salad things. You can use a bowl. You can use the ground. I mean, that's, you know, that's what, they're, that's what it's for. 
And you sow these slightly sprouted seeds on slightly wet dirt, and then you make them think that they're going to become big plants. It's kind of mean, I know. The way that you do that is by putting them in the dark so they think that they're under the dirt, and it helps to put a little weight on them as well. These are very cool because you can take another one and just put it on top with a little bit of weight. And I grow these in multiple ones, so you can just keep stacking them up. uh, Uncover them once a day and make sure that they're wet. Give them a little spray if not, and let them do their thing for a couple of days. They're gonna be white, they're gonna be really leggy as the roots are going out trying to find something to attach to. Uh, I prefer dirt because you know, if you have a shovel, it's free. You can find it anywhere. The bases of trees in parks is fantastic. And then you can replace the dirt after you've used it, after it's full of nutrients, after the nitrogen has been fixed by growing things in it. So you're actually benefiting the park. That's what you tell the police officer when they say, hey, <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, but there's lots of options. You can use, um, you know, any kind of like substance that you can buy. There's, uh, there's coconut fiber mats. There's perlite, which holds water, and there's no dirt. It's a little bit cleaner. So some people in apartments, you know, or sky rises or whatever, prefer to do that. Okay? So these plants are growing a couple of days, and they're going to start to poke out. So you take whatever's squeezing them off, and you put them in the sun, and you make sure to water them a couple times a day. I'm super lazy, so I make sure everything is as easy for me as possible. So I have grow lights that are on a timer and it's like 20 bucks for the light it gives I mean this is that hasn't been in the sun you see how green and beautiful it is I have a little spray bottle which I come by spray put it down and then I leave and I do that when I wake up and I do it at night that's all I do and I stay in greens all the time so I didn't plan very well these are not done. They're going to grow up about like this. These have been done for a little while, sitting in my fridge for a while. Luckily, I actually apply this stuff and live the, the, you know, this way. So like, almost all this stuff I just pulled out of my fridge when I was on my way here. You know? If you're constantly spending a couple minutes a day, you know, let me ferment this, let me sprout this, let me grow this, then you're always going to have fresh food. Some of this stuff might seem complicated and it might seem time consuming, you know? Like you have to sprout it and then you have to ferment it and then you have to take the water from the fermentation and put it with the stuff and leave it out. And it does take calendar time, but the actual amount of effort that you're putting in is not much time at all. Does it, you believe me? Does that sound like you can buy that? Yeah, the nature is doing most of it, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like permaculture. Letting nature do its thing and getting out of the way. You can do that in a huge garden, you know, or you can just do it in a tiny little, like the size of this table is enough to grow all the food for you and your family and ferment everything. Maybe supplement with a little kale or, you know, whatever you want to do. But you could, you could grow everything right here, you know, with some lights. Easy. So, Exactly, just like letting nature do its thing and getting out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna eat those greens as a little salad. But first, we're gonna make some dressing. I'm gonna rinse this out. Yeah, great. Time to eat. All right, hey. Sir. That's fine. It was backup. Thanks a lot. Okay, so we're going to be making a a sesame uh, aioli. Okay? It's going to be like vinaigrette. The reason it's going to be called aioli, or you could call it a ranch, is because it's going to be kind of creamy, because I throw sprouts in everything I possibly can. The sprouts that are going to go in this are sunflower and flax. Uh, Also, a little bit of mustard. I talk about sprouting flax and mustard in the the other video, but um, they're, they're mucilage, so they're even simpler to sprout than anything else. You just put some water in there, like four times as much water as the seeds. You let it sit out on a counter, and it's going to sprout underneath the water. So super simple. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to rock like a tablespoon of flax. I am going to add, let's call it four tablespoons of sunflower seeds. 
Does everybody know what a sprouted sunflower seed looks like? You want to take a look? Let me pass this around. You know how a sunflower seed is like a paddle, a paddle with a little point? Those paddles are leaves. The point is a root. It's a seed. It wants to grow into a plant. It wants to feed and nourish you. There you go. Pass it around. And so then you can see from the sunflower here that those paddles open up and turn into beautiful leaves to collect the sun, to bring chlorophyll into your life and life force into your blood. Okay? So there's that. Um, making a vinaigrette is kind of a formula. So it's one part vinegar to between one and four parts oil, depending on what you like. I think I like things really vinegary, so I go one to one usually. The seeds have a little bit of oil in them as well, so it'll be, you know, so you can take that into consideration. So we'll call it half a cup of sesame oil. This is raw, unfiltered. And we're going to go back to our lovely apple cider vinegar and add a half a cup. This was actually supposed to be garlic, sesame aioli. I didn't bring the garlic, so sorry. I'm just going to fess up. And we're going to add a little salt. We're going to add a little pepper. And we're going to add some sprouted mustard seeds in a little baby food jar here. Just a little bit of mustard seeds is all you need. Let's call it like 12 seeds. And there she blows. So now... Done. The sunflower seeds also have the added benefit of um, thickening it. So it's nice and pretty. Yeah, it's good. It's a little vinegary, actually. I could use the garlic. I'm going to add some more oil. No, that's what I like you to, yeah, but am I going to make you know? There we go, and a little bit more mustard seeds. Let's call it 22. That's sesame oil. Uh, just for the flavor, and also sesame oil is cheaper than olive oil, and lots of great benefits. Lots of fat-soluble vitamins. E, A, D, <coughs> and K, um, uh, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, etc. So it's really good stuff. And I don't love olive oil because it has a lot of omega-6s, which can become toxic if you don't use enough omega-3s to balance it out. The flax has tons of omega-3s, so we would have been fine, but just FYI, okay? Let's give that a try. That'll work. So let's, um, let's come up. And I'm going to get some more silverware. Just uh, tong yourself a little bit of, of greens and a little bit of dressing on top. And throw a little cheese on top and anything else that you want and save some room for dessert. Yes, sir? All right. Those uh, sesame seeds, don't estimate they come in, in seeds. How do you get so many of them like that? Are we talking about sunflower? Yeah. They're sunflower seeds. The sunflower seeds? Yeah. You buy them like that. Can you? And they'll... And they'll, and they'll Oh, and you don't sprout those, you... No? Uh -huh. Yeah, the ones I passed around? Yeah. Did you see how they kind of opened up yeah. and how they had a little tail? But they won't, they won't go too far. Oh, no, no, they won't go too far because you've taken oh, the okay. shell off. Okay. It's like if you break it, they'll be like, screw you, I'm not going to grow into a plant. You broke me, you right. know? But you can still get some benefits out, getting rid of the anti-nutrients, activating the enzymes, and creating some more nutrients. Okay, cool. You know? And it's good because then, you know, then if you want to use them like that, then right. you can Bye. do that. So yeah, exactly. You got it. Nice. I can see the wheels turning. Um, be careful of uh, of seeds. Sometimes they're still attached. The seeds will normally just drop off when the when the leaves open, but sometimes they'll be a little bit. Okay, a little salad and a little garlicless aioli. You don't see the shell itself. You don't the shell, don't you? What's that? You don't want the shell, right? The shell is, yeah, there, there can be a black shell. Just yeah, watch out for it. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm talking about the shell. I appreciate it. There's a seed in there, or a shell. <laughs> Careful. Okay, thank you. 
My pleasure. Oh, and you guys, take some cheese if you want that's next door. Add a little bit on top. And I think you see the makings of a salad. All stuff that we made, all cheap, all delicious. You got a couple of shells in there, be careful. No, they're inexpensive but rich. Right. <laughs> you got it. There you are, sir. Thank you. And were the mustard seeds sprouted too? Yeah. Because why not? So if it flax, was that? The flax is also sprouted, yeah. Wow. No doubt about it. Yeah, just sprout the stuff, stick it in the fridge, and it's there for you. Huh. I'm so lazy, I keep a spoon in the jar in the fridge. <laughs> Yeah, they're okay, wow. That glass is ill-fated. The um, yeah, it's it's kind of missing a flavor. You'll see, it's just sort of like not operating on a certain level because of the garlic. But you can imagine. <clears throat> My pleasure, Senor. Thank you. All right. Everybody get some. All right, I'm going to clean out the blender, get ready for dessert. Okay, while you're enjoying your food, um, I'll point out my, my website, my blog, kitchensinkfarming.org. I have all kinds of health information, all kinds of recipes, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that's like copied and pasted from my book, so you can eventually, if nobody picks it up, you can see the whole thing that way uh, someday. My email, jp at kitchensinkfarming.org. Send me all your questions. Uh, it's better to comment on the blog. So I can see if you're interested in seeing something like, hey, JP, why don't you try this? Why don't you, you know, can we talk more about this? I can, I can have that as a post, you know? Yes? Where can we get your book? It's not available yet by a publisher, but it's um, in an emailable format. So just, yeah, just let me know. Just uh, ask for it on the blog and I'll send it to you. I'll... Eight gigabytes is 500 pages. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and there's no page numbers. There's a table of contents, but you got to figure it out. There's, um, there's <laughs> why sprout, ferment, and grow food, and I think it's pretty thorough talking about the state of affairs in the world, modern agriculture, GMO, health, hypermaturation, modern American diet, etc. There's how to do it. There's sprouting, there's fermenting, and there's growing, and you know it talks. It runs the gamut. It's it's everything that I do, which I think is pretty thorough. Then at the end, there's what to do with it once you've done it. It's uh, 120 pages of, of uh, recipes to use the things you know, the crops and the fermentations and the brews and everything that you've that you've. Uh... Hey. Question. Sweater, how you got involved to doing that? Thanks. Um, well, I went to school for nutrition and biochemistry, and then I did nothing for a long time. I'm a, a yoga teacher professionally, and pretty much, you know, this is just the way that I, I eat. I'm interested in feeling amazing all the time. I don't think that health is, is a matter of just not getting sick. I think that health is having incredible vitality to approach every day with passion to get exactly what you want out of life and to you know to suck the marrow out of every day like Thoreau said probably a bad example to say to a, during a vegan talk but that's what I want you know so I'm always thinking how can I do this better how can I do this more efficiently how can I let my body get more out of this also how can I do it easier and cheaper because that's really important, you know, because I'm a busy person. Okay, I'm lazy. And I want to get the most out of things that I possibly can. I'm so, sure you guys have some ideologies, uh, some, like dreams like feeding the world. Well, like you know, the good thing about... Humanity, why is humanity starting to develop all this? This should be teached all over the world. I hope that a lot of people come to that conclusion. Yeah. I'm sure you found a publisher. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir. Hey, um, so where are those green ones? I don't know where they are. Yeah, sunflower. Oh, okay. f f I forgot it in Spanish. F <laughs> uh, far farilla something? Oh, oh, sorry, Portuguese. I have no idea. What's your question? Um, you use lights, right? Like yeah. Sunlight. Yeah, I have grow lights. Do you leave the lights on for how long? I leave it on from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., okay. um, which is 
kind of is pretty much like when I start to wind down to go to sleep. So I don't know. I mean, like a good, you know, 16, 18, 20 hours. It depends on climate. It depends on where you are. It depends on where you're growing. A lot of stuff you just experiment. It's all going to be good, but you can just get it better and better by the, the little DIYism, you know, do it yourself mentality. And how long does it take This is. Um, that's a great question. Thank you. They sprout for a couple of days. These have been in dirt for three, to three or four days. So it's it's like a week and a half process overall. You know, and when you like right now, that's been six days. I would start another batch, so that it's constantly rotating. You know, and you just. What type of soil? Uh, backyard soil. <laughs> I dug it up from my backyard. Okay. Yeah. Can you grow it in compost? Not in compost, because compost is not nutrients for plants. Compost is nutrients for bacteria. The bacteria change it into nutrients for plants. So, um, yeah, like a lot of people, they take their compost, they put it right in the dirt and try to grow with it, but that's just wasted space. We need the bacteria to turn it around, make those, to chelate those, those minerals, take them from organic to, to non-organically bound so the plants can use them. Did you have a question? <laughs> Email me. Put it on the blog. Let's have dessert. So we have uh, we've discussed this apple butter situation here. If, I, I kind of like how it turned out. If you haven't gathered already, we're going to eat this on a little bit of sunflower butter. What happened to the sunflowers? Great. So. Um, so really simple. I mean, you can eat it just by yourself. You can, you know, make raw breads with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. But because um, I love peanut butter and jelly, it's just one of my emotional, you know, take care of me kind of things. I like to eat it like this. And, you know, in fact, um, sprouting and fermenting peanuts and doing a little PB&J situation is quite called for. I, um, I've ground up some, some of these. And I have taken some apple butter and I threw them in my dehydrator and made some bars with them. And they're pretty good. Did you remember your question? Oh, yeah. Um, you get our supply here or you use orange or all of the yeah, that's a great way. Actually, um, I do get a lot of stuff from People's Co-op because it's just fantastic and the prices are good. When I was living in Los Angeles, like in the middle of West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, I ordered almost everything online because I, it just wasn't convenient for me to get stuff and it was cheaper online. It's not quite as, um, as ecologically savvy to have everything shipped, but if you're in a culture that doesn't really value you know, sustainability and, and et cetera, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to get angry messages from people in L.A., but I think you get my point. That, oh, thanks. That was coconut butter. It's just delicious. It's the, I didn't make the coconut butter myself. I have. Very easy. Yeah, super easy. Yeah, everything's easy. All this stuff that we think is so difficult. It's going to get noisy for a second. seconds for a coarse sunflower butter and which cost probably a buck I don't know 75 cents and um, and it's still alive because it's sprouted and it's good as you will see in a moment so let's uh, let's do it up come here and I'm gonna put a little uh, sunflower butter on your plate with a little of the apple goodness and we'll rock a little macadamia cheese on top and you'll see how I eat Every day, all day. <laughs> Come on up. I, well, I teach here, actually, but I teach at about seven studios. I'm going to use this one. Do you teach at um, Believe in Movement? I do. Okay. How many jump here is teaching yoga? <laughs> Too many. You teach Brad I do. Yeah. And I, I do Kirtan and uh, Mantra. Anything that's going to help us live a better life. The mac cheese. Uh, Vitamix. I'm sorry? 
I've had it for uh, just about five years. I bought it used. It was ten years old. And you use it every day? I use it multiple times a day. Get some mac cheese if you like. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you guys this. I didn't put any salt in the nut butter, which I would have done normally, but in case there's people that don't want to do salt. So um, take a little bit, put it in your palm, and sprinkle it over the top if you want to. It's a, it brings out the sweetness, and it's, it's really nice. Boom. Whoops. There you go. It's going to be a fermented raw food guru. You know what? I want to take some mac cheese if you like. It's right here. I mean, I, whatever it takes to get the world happy. <laughs> That's my job. That is good. Oops, thanks. Right? Yeah. Do you say you've been here in the area for how long now? Uh, it's been like, what's your, like three, four months? Oh, okay. Because you know there was a raw food movement that was here. Yeah. And I don't know what happened some to it. cheese, some salt. Yeah, there's not a lot of raw stuff available in Portland for some strange reason. There's, um, there's like, Sip is the only place that has wheatgrass. It's, it's kind of amazing. Well, maybe you maybe you revive it, then, huh? All year. Yeah, and like I said, it's not for everybody. And you know, in the summertime, I'm sure things are more popular. But in the winter, you know, there's there's specific things that you can do to make it easier for you to, to digest, increase your digestive fire. You know, ginger, exercise, eating at noon when the sun is highest. Um, you know, all sorts of things like that are going to make you stronger, be able to digest the stuff. So since this is a dessert, is that something you wouldn't eat daily? It's more like a special occasion well, for you? Well, where's the sugar coming from? Yeah, it's coming from that's apple. Why have, that's why I'm And no, most of the sugar is taken out already when I take the juice. Mm -hmm. So it tastes great, but okay. there's not a lot of sugar. And what sugar... Daily? Oh, yeah, why not? You can do whatever... Yeah. I mean, there's stuff that I eat every single day for sure. I eat some flax. I eat greens. Uh, you know, most of my meals are actually mostly greens. Um, I do kombucha every day. I do apple cider vinegar. Vinegar every day. I do a little seaweed every day. Most days. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, that's actually another topic. Uh, there's some people who tout chocolate raw cacao as a superfood. It has a lot of magnesium and it has some other good stuff in it. It also has some things which I, I'm not really a big fan of, and it's easy to get those things from from other places. So a lot of the people who, um, you know, say it's great are also selling it. But it's like... Great, yeah. Um, ch the, one of the reasons that we're attracted to chocolate a lot is because it has something called anand anandamide. Ananda is Sanskrit for bliss. It triggers receptors in, on our cell membranes that make us very happy. Um, there's, uh, there's other ways to, to produce this in your own body, you know. Pranayama, yoga, exercise, positive thought, right thinking, relationships, they all produce anandamide. So, I mean, so, you know, you do what you got to do, one little step at a time. It's like I tell people, this is overwhelming. You're not going to start this tomorrow, you know? But maybe you start one little thing tomorrow, then the next day, another little tiny step. Well, after two or three months, you've made 60 or 90 steps, and those add up to be, you know, quite a difference. So you just, you know, a little bit at a time. Don't jump into anything. It's not the way things happen in nature. It's not the way things happen in your body. Just take it slow. And, uh, you know, you eventually you'll, you'll achieve all of your goals and you'll make up a whole new set of goals and you'll achieve this. <laughs> yes? How did you ferment the apple stuff? Excellent question. You take the pulp from the juicer. You can also just blend up apples, blend up any vegetable, any fruit, whatever you want to do. I mean, this is, this is like kindergarten stuff. I mean, I, I could just imagine what some of you guys could think of to, you know, ferment walnut, pear, whatever. <laughs> that's like first grade. See, that's the way my mind works. I'm super simple. Anyway, let me, let me come back to your question. You take this stuff and you put it in something. <clears throat> I chose garbage. <laughs> this thing from this, from the salad. Okay. Then you put rejuvelac, the, for the probiotic water in it. And then you stir it up and then you cover it. So bugs can't get in it. And then you let it sit there. 
and you might want to stir it up once or twice a day just to make sure that all the bacteria are getting to all the good stuff and then you taste it. That's my favorite part. And when it tastes absolutely incredible and you want to eat the whole thing, you know it's done. Is that clear? It's very clear. I think I'm just seeing pattern here though, right? I mean, that's <laughs> Is it me being lazy and a glutton? <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's basically how you have service to everything, right? You put something in the container, you throw the black in, you let it sit for a bit, stir it up, oh, and then you can eat it. Anything that you recommend not fermenting? It, bicycle inner tubes. <laughs> I've tried it and they're kind of chewy. No, um, yeah, I mean, well, you, any animal products um, you want to be kind of careful with. People certainly ferment things all throughout the world. You know, take a, like a, a haunch of a lion, bury it underground for months, whatever, take it out. It's like covered in maggots. I mean, that's like, you know, what people do. Personally, I mean, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of eating meat as it is, but with like you can ferment this stuff, you can ferment dairy, etc. But it's good to use specific like cultivated flora. Like with the kombucha, that's a specific flora. You don't just take tea and set it out there and, and wait because it, you know you can't control what's going on. Kefir, you put it in the milk and it's gonna rock it. You know, it knows what it's doing. Nothing else is gonna get in there. Make sense? So with the with the with the probiotic water, you can add it to any vegetable, any fruit, any nut, any seed, anything, and it makes it better. So is that like a catalyst for the fermentation process? I would say it's more of, of a starter, like sourdough is a starter, because that's where the bacteria are. You know, I mean, it might be a catalyst in your in your chronological process, <laughs> but as far as biologically, it's it's the actual you know agent. True. Um, so if you, so when you say you just leave it in the you know, kind of like days or weeks or... This was three days. Okay. Um, and it is, uh, well, it's up to you. It's really a matter of personal preference. Um, by going too far, you're talking about that you're going to get sick from eating it. This is, um, again, it's up to you. There's different cultures which can eat stuff which has gone a lot further than, than other cultures, you know, and it just depends on what you're used to. You want to make sure you enjoy your food, you know, so don't ferment it too much, but you also want to make sure that you get all the benefits, so you find somewhere in there, you know, and like all this stuff is going to keep changing, keep maturing every day. It's biologically active. It's, you know, it's, it's happening. It's sparkly. It's amazing. So you can continue to taste like its entire life cycle and it's probably going to be gone before it gets to any, you know? Like, put it in the fridge, it cold stabilizes, it slows down. I don't know. I mean, like this, like the apple butter, how was that as far as it's, like, ferment, fermentation level? Was it uh, kind of on the, like, maybe we should slow down side? Or was it, like, this is great, I can take more? For you, the apple stuff? The red stuff? So it could probably could have gone a little bit more. And then maybe you can say, ooh, well, I took it a little bit too far that time. I mean, this is a really long-winded answer to say it's just totally up to you and enjoy. You are, um, you, you're not going to get sick. Like, you, it's going to start to taste bad way before it's going to make you sick. Okay. You know, that's just what our senses are made for. Excuse me. Mmm. Oh, God, so good. You're, uh... The book come out, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, Why do you ask? Well, I'm because I want to come to the top. I want to last a long time. I don't want to you know. <laughs> yeah, they're going to get messy. They're going to have beet juice smeared all over them, pages stuck together with fermented five, sweet potatoes. Five, 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 five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> five. That's um, 2,500 pages. That's, well, that's, that's five. I want to make sure. This is like it's going to be the Bible. Well, you got to Thanks. That's right. You get the free Bible. All right. Stop. I have a question that might sound stupid, but um, this philosophy of eating like this for you or what you recommend, is it only eating like that or you could have a little of cooked brown rice in your plate or that's not part of this idea? You know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. So is it only like a raw diet you're suggesting? No. No? And the most important thing that I'm suggesting is to not be dogmatic about it. 
what our, our needs change from morning, noon to night. They change throughout the seasons of the year. They change throughout the seasons of our life. So it's a constant experimentation. I came from Los Angeles up to Portland. Completely different climate. My body's getting used to stuff. My body has different needs. You know, so I, I change because everything's always changing, you know? And if I'm stuck in my ways, then I'm not going to be enjoying life as well, much as I can. I, I totally understand. I feel you mean like you should eat like cooked rice, you should just ferment it. I totally understand what you're asking, yeah. um, and it's a great question. Um, and the answer is it depends. It depends on you. In, in Ayurvedic medicine, the most ancient medical model in the world, which is also the most effective, they say everything is good and everything is bad, depending on what you want to achieve and who you are. Okay? So you apply that in, in, an, in an intelligent way. Um, cooked food is easier to digest in the short run. The cell walls of plants are fibrous and they're hard. That's what keeps things standing up straight. They're difficult to break down. Okay? So when you cook things, it breaks them down, you know? You steam things, they get squishy in the bodies. It's much easier to digest them. So if somebody is, has less energy, you know, an older person, if somebody who's sick, somebody who doesn't have the strongest digestion, which is like 99.99% of, you know, of the world, cook stuff is, is great for them. You know, even sprouting, fermenting, and then cooking. It's better than just cooking it in the first place. Um, there is no right answer. There's, there's what I'm kind of... Kate Blanchett said um, about acting, something beautiful. She's less interested in finding the answers than she is in the journey to the question. You know, myself in my own personal life, I am constantly journeying towards the question. How can I feel absolutely amazing from my next meal? How can it fill my body with palpable life force so that I can go on with the rest of my life and, and accomplish what I want to accomplish, be the most kind and compassionate person, be filled with energy, and radiate that out to everybody I see. That's what I ask myself when I'm like, well, do I want a cookie or do I want some sprouted nut butter and fermented apple ginger, you know? So the answer to that is, you know, to me it's kind of obvious. To other people, you know, they make their choice. Does that answer your question? Yes. Kind of. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what's best for you because I don't know and you don't know. You have to experiment. In life is a science. You have a theory. You'd be like, okay, sprouted food, living food is great, fermented food is great. That's my theory. So then you apply it and you experiment on your body. You add stuff, you know. Maybe you take away stuff and you see what happens. You observe the results. You don't say, well, this is good, so I should be feeling like this you see what's really happening. And then you can make your choices based on that. Say, well, maybe because of this or that, or I don't know why, but you know, like for some reason, cashews, they just don't make me feel good. They're nut, they're sprouted, they're fermented, but for some reason I get hives, you know? But everybody says that cashews are this greatest thing. Everybody uses them in every raw food cookbook and every raw food restaurant. But this is what's going on with me, so I'm going to deal with that. And then, maybe you find out later on the road, cashews are toxic. They have the same chemical as poison ivy. They're not seeds. They're not nuts. They're actually like, uh, they're, sorry, they're, they're the, um, the, the seed of a pear. You know, they're not, they're not nuts. They're like, um, they're like apple seeds. They're, they're naturally carcinogenic. They're toxic. You shouldn't eat them ever and they're terrible for you and a lot of people break out in hives or acne or just get toxic or whatever as a result um but you see like i didn't know that when i was like cashews no it just doesn't work for me so you know it's like always observing just little details you know yeah good great. yeah okay great well thank you guys so much for coming it's thank been an absolute pleasure Great. All right. Well, I'm going to um, eat a little bit because that's my favorite thing. That's what this is all about. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. And it's local, too. It's not traveling through. It's here. That's right. So give me what you can. Give me California thing and book some Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I found my PR.